Hello and welcome to this beginner whittling lesson. In this lesson we are going to whittle uh, one of these cute little flowers from a piece of one by one by two inch basswood. And I'm calling this a beginner whittling lesson instead of a complete beginner whittling lesson uh, because this one's just a little bit more challenging than some of the other ones I've been putting out recently. Um, still definitely beginner friendly and uh, you'll be able to to pick it up if you've been working on some projects but if it's your very first project i might suggest you start with um, one of my other projects uh, like my goldfish or uh, back at the beginning so this is going to be very similar to the goldfish video uh, but yeah so let's get started with our piece of wood and our pattern so i've marked the pattern on the front here and uh, the way this is going to work is that um, this will be the, the front, and I'm going to show you how to draw the pattern on to the back. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a center line on each face. And I'm just doing that by uh, estimating center, which isn't too hard on, on this piece of wood, but it's right down the middle of that. And then the next thing I'm going to do is estimate about a third of the way up from the bottom of the block. And I'm going to carry that horizontal line all the way along about, so we've got about a third of the carving will be the leaves on the bottom and about two thirds of the carving will be the flower on the top. Okay. All right, and then next, uh, I'm going to connect these two corners from bottom left to top right on both the shorter rectangle and the larger one here. And then to be clear, this is the area that we are going to carve out. And I'm going to do the same thing over here and mark that area that we are going to remove. Okay. So uh, I'm going to use my uh, one and three quarter inch uh, deep holler knife today. Uh, I would recommend if you have one, a roughing knife for this. Again, even though it's a small carving, it will go quicker and be easy to make um, nice clean big cuts if you have a roughing knife, but you can use a smaller knife if you need to. Uh, you'll just need to take a few more cuts in order to do it. And similar to the, the goldfish project, what we're going to do is start by taking this front corner and the back corner completely off so that we're left with just, just uh, that width. And I'm going to do that by just doing a series of uh, big push cuts into here. And what I do is go one way and I keep going until I get all the way down, even with these center lines on either side to get to a smooth flat surface. And then I flip it around and I do the same thing going the other direction until I've completely flattened that side. Okay. So there you go, we've got one flat side there, and I'm gonna do it on the other side. And again, you could you could start with a, a piece of three quarter inch board and kind of rough a shape out on your saw or something like that, but I feel like this is fun and satisfying to get this nice effect from just a square block of wood and getting an interesting shape out of it. And it gives us that interesting uh, shape on the corners, and I got a lot of breakage there, that's okay. Uh, what I do when I get breakage is I turn around and I go the other direction to try to flatten that out. And that'll happen sometimes. So I've got a little breakage down here, I'm not too worried about it because I know that I'm gonna actually um, carve off uh, down here and we'll we'll see that in a minute but that's 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 real that happens sometimes it's not a reason to have to stop we can keep going here all right so i've got my front and back taken off so i've got a flat uh, piece of wood here and the next thing i'm going to do is take these uh, big triangles out of the out of the corners that i've shaved in 
And I'm going to do that just by a simple push cut, or sorry, stop cut in, push cut up to that, and uh, start small and just work your way down until we take that whole triangle out. You take as many steps as you need to to do this. If you're not getting as big of cuts out as what I'm getting here, that's fine. Um, take as many steps as you need, but what you want to do at the end is make sure you have a nice, smooth surface, flat all the way down, uh, following those lines, right? So there we go. And then we're going to do the same thing uh, to this corner here, and if you want to, you can even connect those with a line to kind of see further how we're going to take those off. Like that. And I will go ahead and do that there. And over there. Now, I went ahead and did that on both sides. I'm going to go ahead and show you why I would recommend you start with the big one and then do the smaller one. The problem is, if I did the smaller one here like I did here, it's okay. I can do it. I can put my stop cut in there. And then I can do my push card up to it. But here's the thing. If I've already carved this one down, I have a high risk of breaking this little corner here. So I've got to take really small cuts to start with in order to ensure that I don't break this corner off. So as you see, it can be done. But my recommendation would be that you start with this bigger one like we did on the other side so that you're carving into a more sturdy surface down there and then do this one up there. But it's helpful to see both ways. You can do it the other way. It's just a little bit, got to be a little bit more careful. Okay. All right, so that's great. We've got a good um, outline of what that shape is going to look like. And our next step is going to be to start shaping the leaves on the bottom. So I'm going to do a little bit more drawing here so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to put a little notch here right in the middle of the bottom. And I'm going to connect that to this corner right here. So just like that. And same thing over to the other side like that. Okay, let's go ahead and do it on the other side, just like this, and just like this, okay? And then, uh, also helpful here is I'm going to put a center line down the side of that face I just carved off each side of the leaf. And to be clear, what we're going to do is remove this corner right here so that I'm left with a flat surface from this line to this line over there. So I connected that line there and I'm going to remove all of this and make that flat. Okay, I can do that just by starting to shave off the corner and take multiple cuts to do that. That's fine. Take as many as you need to. But what I'm looking for is a flat surface that connects from this center line on the side to this line over here all the way across and that looks pretty good okay and now you can see where I wasn't too concerned about the little bit of breakage I had there because I know I'm going to come across the middle and uh, clean that up so I'll go ahead and draw that in like that and what you'll see is that really if we connect those corners out we're just going to end up with another square shape or a diamond inside of the square as we flatten each one of these sides out. So I'm not going to shave this in, but I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to shave off the corner until I get a flat surface, just like that, from that center line on the side to that pattern line I drew in on the front. Very good. All right. So let's do the same thing on the other side. Got those drawn in. Flatten that right out. Okay. 
Okay. So I've got, again, um, a square or a diamond shape on the bottom that's left there. And I've got these nice lines that come in, starting to make these surfaces on the sides of the leaf on the bottom. So let's continue with that leaf. And what I'm going to do is mark a spot about a third of the way down. If I went horizontally connecting the top of the leaf, about a third of the way down from there towards the bottom. And I'm going to draw a little line out to that same corner here. And what I'm doing is I'm marking this little, you know, this little notched area where it comes down. Do the same thing on the other side, about a third of the way down from, from the top there. You can just estimate that and draw a little line there. Okay, because what I'm going to do next is I'm going to make a similar cut to what we just did on the leaves down here. I'm going to do that to the flower petal. So uh, these cuts on the side here is what I'm looking to do next. It's going to be very similar to what we just did. So I can also draw a pattern line from the center of this up to the corner there. And from here up to there. So you can see it well. I can similarly draw a center line down the side. And let's go ahead and do that on this side too. I don't always draw all of these lines on, but I think it'll be helpful for you to see exactly where these cuts are going. So I'm going to do a similar kind of thing where I'm going to flatten this whole surface down to here, but it's going to be a little different because I'm not just going off to an end. I'm going into the leaf part here. So I'm going to do that in a couple steps. The first step is I'm going to make a stop cut right along here. And I'm going to put my tip basically at that corner junction and then rock my knife in vertically right along that line. Okay. And then I'm going to start just a little ways back and do a cut up to a, that stop cut and just pop that out. And that's going to just start to help me define where that cut is going to go in. Now when I do that, I get this little this little piece that's sticking out there. So then I'm just going to do a quick little cut like that to get rid of that. And that's fine. Okay, I want to do that um, all the way around before I do my bigger cuts. So I'm going to do the same thing here. Notice it's a little bit trickier because, uh, because I'm right-handed on this side. I've got to turn it around in order to reach this. But I still want to make a stop cut along here with the tip going up to the middle. Okay, and this is what makes this one a little bit trickier than some of my previous videos, is you're going to have to make a little bit of awkward cuts here. So in this case, I'm going to have to carve down towards myself a little bit, and I'm being very careful as I'm doing this. Yes, I'm carving toward my hand. Um, I'm, I'm holding my knife with my thumb here, giving some counterbalance. I'm using my thumb on my right hand also to give counterbalance. So as I'm pulling in, I have control over this. It's not going to pop out and um, stab into my hand. But that'll take a little bit of practice and a little bit of getting comfortable with. And so I would suggest you start with small cuts and take it easy as you get comfortable with that. Okay. And I might have gotten a little bit of a, a remainder piece there that I can pop out as well. Okay. Let's go ahead and do the same thing on the other side just a little bit more quickly. I'm going to pop those out establishing the top of the leaf and the bottom of the petal. And that'll make the second part of carving these uh, petal sides a little bit easier. Okay. All right, so my next step is going to be just like this cut I made up here, except for I'm going to do it down here, and it's going to be a stop cut into the top of the, uh, or yeah, the top of the leaf. So I'm going to similarly just carve that down, and you realize that's at a little bit of a funny angle. So I'm just going to extend my stop cut there and there until that piece comes out. And I'm going to keep doing that, flattening down, extend my stop cut if I have to do it back here as well. I'm doing that on both sides until I get that completely flat surface. 
from the center line on the side over to that pattern line I drew in the middle. Okay, you don't be tempted to pry those out. You want to make sure you cut those out with your knife. That you're not prying or pulling. Make sure you make clean cuts with your knife as you do that. Good. So similarly, uh, when I flip this around because I'm right-handed, this is going to be a little bit more awkward for me to do here. I can start it kind of in my normal push cut mode here, uh, but you can see if I'm trying to do this stop cut up here, I'm really in danger on my right hand of gashing across here in a way that I don't really want to do. And I can't really work my knife up in there. So I can kind of start it that way, but to get this um, clean, I'm really going to have to turn it around do more of a pairing cut towards myself and again you're being very careful here to uh, control your cut take multiple cuts if you need to make sure you're wearing a glove and make sure you have control never push hard if you feel like you're pushing too hard and you don't have control just back off it try it again with a smaller cut i'm going to repeat that a few times until i get it flat connecting those lines and then what I might do is just flip it around because it is easier for me to do a, a push cut here. I've got it mostly flat down there so then I can come across from up here at an angle that's a little more comfortable to me and finish that off. So I've got a nice flat surface there just like I did on the ones down below. Very good. All right same thing on the other side but I'm just going to do it a little bit faster because we've already kind of talked through it. Uh, flatten those out the same way and what I'm really trying to do is make sure at the end I really go along and make that a nice flat smooth surface okay same thing on our last side here And again, I might have to make a couple stop cuts, one along the side there and one across the top of the leaf. And then when I've got that bottom part done, I'm going to flip it around and finish it off in a way that's a little more comfortable with me as a push cut. Very good. All right, so we got those side lines in, coming in. And then uh, the next thing I'm going to do is work on this junction between the petals and the base. So I want to make a little cut right here. I'm going to put the tip of my knife right in that corner and just put it, stick it pretty much straight in and make a little stop cut right in that corner. And then on the other side, the same way. And then I'm going to take my knife and just go horizontally straight across that and cut a little chip right out of there. Okay. And that's just going to make a nice little, uh, a nice little pocket there where it looks like that petals going down into the leaf uh, so it's not just a, a straight line but we've got a little bit of separation there all the way up in the middle so same thing here straight in with the tip of my knife on both sides to make stop cuts and then just a small horizontal cut to make that dip in there all right so let's go ahead and finish off the bottom of the leaves or the top of the leaves and what I'm going to do here is I don't want this uh, sharp line here I want it to be softened like this a little bit I've still got a smooth surface here but it's not just this jarring um, line that I that I get there between the stop cut so I'm going to go across this corner and push in like that and what I'm doing very carefully here is I'm flattening that hard corner I made and the reason I'm trying to be very careful is if I'm not careful, the tip of my knife is going to point into here, and I'm going to get unwanted lines along the side of the petals. So to keep this clean, I'm going to use just the tip of my knife, and then I can extend that actually just gently along the corner all the way out to the edge. right? And so you can see the difference there where on the right side here we've got a nice, still a flat surface, but smooth, no hard corners straight out. Now the other side is going to be just a little bit trickier because again I can't do the same thing here. Uh, I've got to do this as a pairing cut towards myself on this side. So I'm going to do the same thing here and I'm you can see I'm using my 
thumb on the side of the blade, not the bottom of the blade, but the side of the blade uh, to give a counterbalance. And I'm making a similar cut towards myself. Even my, my fingers are here, they're below the wood. So if I slipped off here, they're going to go over my fingers, but I am cutting towards myself. So I'm being conscious about where those fingers are at and what I'm doing. If you're pushing hard, back off and try it again. I want to get a nice flat surface like that. And then again, similarly, just a little bit off that corner with the tip of my knife, and just flatten that out, okay? So you can see the importance of a sharp knife in order to make some of these cuts. Let's do the same thing on the other side, just a little quicker, since we already explained it on the first side. Same thing here as I gently soften those corners. Okay, great. I just see a little bit of a piece there that I want to get out. And I always like to clean as I go. If I see something, I like to get it out of there right as I go to make sure I'm leaving it clean as I go along. You can always come back at the end and clean it out too, but like to do it as I go. So the last thing to finish the leaves is I'm going to add this little um, cut here and that just gives it kind of a nice little overlap look like the, the leaves are overlapping there. So to do that I'm going to put a V cut in here. I'm going to put a stop cut first that basically extends straight down from this line. Um, just put a stop cut in with the tip of my knife straight into the wood and then a little V cut from both sides into that. Okay. And you might have to practice that a few times to get it, you know, in one try like that. That's fine. You can do a couple cuts there if you want. And I'm just going to extend that cut a little bit now that I put that there. Okay. Same thing on the other side. Stop cut and then a little V cut from both sides to pop that out and make that a little bit bigger here. Just like that. Good. So our leaves are pretty much done. Um, on the bottom and now let's move to finishing off the the petals on the top so uh, the next thing I'm going to do there is what I want to do is I want to taper the top you can see this is tapered towards the top instead of going just straight up I want it to angle towards the top here so to do that I want to put a for reference a straight line crossways down the middle here and I'll put a little horizontal line. I don't usually draw this, but just for reference, I'd say it's about three eighths of an inch down. And I'll do that on both sides too. And what I want to do is I want to taper from that horizontal line up to that top in the middle. Now we did this similarly if you did the fish project. We did this on the fish project on the tail to push up there. And the way we did it there was to use push cuts all along here until we got up to there. I'm going to show you another way to do this, and it will work if you have a strong, sharp knife, and that's going to be just a cross cut all the way across the side here. Uh, you can still do it with the push cuts if you want to, but I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to do this if you have a strong, large knife that can handle it. So I'm going to go cross the grain here all the way across down to that line, okay? I am giving a good amount of pressure. I want to make sure my finger is underneath the tip of that knife and I can just do a cross cut all the way across there. I'm going to follow it again because it gets off track there at the end and make sure I've got a flat line across there and then extend that up towards the corner, right? And you can smooth that out, flatten it out if you need to. But just quick and easy, I can do that. That'll take some practice. Um, and again, if you'd rather, you could start here and do push up, push cuts up towards the top. Um, I'm going to do a similar thing on this side. Just straight across like that. Okay. My fingers are just below my knife line. <laughs> so I am being cognizant of that as you watch it. And you always want to be aware of where your blade is and where your fingers are and uh, be thinking about that. So uh, now I've got this bit on the top. I'm going to do a similar cross cut here. Just at a shallower angle up to that middle line on both sides. Okay, and you might need to take a few cuts to do that. That's okay until I've just got that center ridge. And I'm literally just going to go sideways across the top 
as you're straight straight across the grain that's a little bit hard on your knife you're going to want to make sure your knife is sharp uh, you might want to make sure you strop it before or after you do that okay uh, all right, so the next step is to add these notches to create the petals. In order to do that, I am going to, I'll draw it in for you again so you can see it. I'm going to draw a line right along this angle, parallel to that, about an eighth of an inch in, and I'm going to extend it straight across the front down to that next face on the other side. I'm going to make a big V cut right there. Okay, so I'm going to put a stop cut right along that. And then I'm going to carve down into it from both sides to make a big V cut. And I want it big and I want it deep. So I'm just going to do that a couple times to extend it all the way across the front there, just like that. Okay. Same thing on the other side. I'm not going to draw it in, I'll just mark it with my knife, but about an eighth of an inch down parallel to that. And I'm going to extend that all the way up to right here. And then I'm going to make a big V cut down into there. Okay, I'm going to do that a few times to make sure it's nice and deep. The deeper it is, the more you'll be able to see the shadows in it, especially after you paint it, and it'll just look a little bit nicer. All right. Next, I'm going to do a similar thing here, following the same the same line on on the other side, the ridge here, about a eighth of an inch in. I'm going to make a stop cut where that's going to go, and this is going to end up just being perpendicular to the one I just made. And I'm going to cut it in until it's just as deep as the one I just made. Okay. Just like that. And then I'll go ahead while I'm on this side, I'm going to do one more that's parallel to this one I just did, perpendicular to the first one, about halfway between here and the top. So right about here, I'm just going to mark it with my knife with a stop cut and do another V cut in here. Now this is getting a little bit tricky because you're you're really actually, if you look at this, you're going pretty much straight into the end grain and straight across. So you might have a little bit of resistance there and I'm just kind of alternating to get comfortable with it until I get it. There we go. Okay, nice clean cuts. You can take a few cuts to get there if you need to. Let's go ahead and do those on the other side. So again, about an eighth of an inch in from this ridge. Do another V cut down to my first one. Same thing here, halfway between that one and the top. Nice deep V cut, I'm taking a few cuts to get there. There we go. All right, now the last thing we wanna do on this is we've got a very flat line on the top on that one on the left. You can see on the right, I've got these little notches going in between the pedals. That just makes it a little bit more interesting. So what I'm going to do if I look at this is these line up, especially the top and bottom ones, conveniently pretty close to each other. So I'm going to do three V cuts across the top in order to connect those. So this one I'm going to put in right here, a stop cut, and I'm going straight into the end grain with that. And then I'm carving in the wrong direction against the grain to get down to it. So you're going to make sure your knife is sharp and that you're making controlled, careful cuts, and you can pop that out. Your knife can cut against the grain, but make sure it's sharp when you do that. You might want to strop it before or after to make sure it stays sharp. Same thing on this side. Put that straight stop cut in. I'm cutting in really along that same angle that I've already created with those other cuts. Turn it around and do the same thing. That gives me those nice notches you can see across the top. Now in the middle, these don't line up straight into each other the way they did on the top and the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a stop cut right in the middle of this between the two, and then my V cut is going to go down naturally along those lines created from that one on that side. Turn it around here and that one on that side. So I get that nice um, cut across. There you go. Looks cool, doesn't it? All right, so I've got that nice um, ridges across the top. And then I'm gonna do one last step. 
which is that uh, as a final step here, I am going to flare the sides in so that we get a little bit of a curve down the side. I like these straight, smooth lines, but with just a little bit of a curve, we can add a little bit more character to this. So I, in order to do that, I am going to do a push cut, but I'm going to roll it. So this is really a rolling cut. I'm going to start right below the, leaf, the top of the leaf. And my goal is to go in and roll down just like that. Okay, and you can see that nice flare. So look at the difference between the left side there and the right side. Just a little bit more interesting. And my goal is to not make this base any smaller than it already is. So I'm trying to go in and roll and get out before I get to that corner. So let's do it on the other side. In, roll, and that. I've got to use the tip of my knife for this. In order to be able to roll it, I've got to be using the thinner part of the blade so that it's got room to roll. If I try to do this back here, I'm not going to be able to do that because the, the width of the blade is just going to prevent me from that. So I'm going to do the same thing on the sides of the petals. In and roll like that. I'll do that one just a little bit more. And let's do that on the other side, just below the top, using the tip of your knife. Push in and roll. And then I'm really trying to get it so I'm almost out naturally by the bottom. But i got to do a little stop cut there at the end to get out. And you can see how that adds just that nice flare of the petals and the leaves on the top. And that's it. Um, that's our that's our finished finished product. So uh, painting these is pretty straightforward. Um, what I did on these is I just painted um, with watered down acrylic paints, green on the bottom and whatever color you want on the top. And then I finished them off with a coat of Howard's Feed and Wax. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, happy whittling.